All right, folks, so we're going to talk today about discussion norms and how we're going to have discussions, especially in a year when some of our discussions are going to be happening in person in our classroom, especially in a socially distanced classroom, and also when some of our discussions are going to be happening on Schoology and on discussion forums. And I really, really want to establish how discussion norms are going to work as we go through this year. The first thing I want you to do is to think about a time when you really felt listened to, when you felt like somebody was definitely listening to you and you felt like they heard what you were trying to do, um, what you were trying to say. And I want you to think about how you knew that, how did you know they were listening, and how did it make you feel. And I want you to pause this video and write about a half a page to a page in your journal responding to those prompts. So take a couple of minutes now, pause this video, and write that out. Okay, you finished your journal entry, let's move on. Listening is really the most important part of talking. I know that sounds really crazy, but when we think about a classroom discussion and how a classroom discussion works, it's the listening and not the talking that makes the difference. Um, and so when you think about how is it that you knew that other person was listening to you and how it made you feel when you knew you were being listened to, that's the feeling that makes a conversation really worthwhile. Because if people feel listened to and heard, they're going to make more meaningful points. And if you are genuinely listening to your classmates, the conversation can build and grow rather than just being a lot of um, moments of bounced ideas going from one person to the next. So when we think about listening, we really need to think about creating a culture of listening that every day we walk through the doors or we open a Schoology discussion forum and the immediate instinct is to listen. And there's really three pieces to that. That's listening patiently, listening actively, and policing your voice. When we listen patiently, we're using social cues to show other people that we're listening. So one way that uh, people do this is by nodding somebody will say something to you and you'll nod along, right? And you're actually listening. You're nodding because, yes, I hear what you're saying. Um, or you might purse your lips. If you don't agree, you might crease your brow or purse your lips. Hmm, I'm thinking about that. Let me process that. You might smile. Uh, you might make eye contact with that person. Um, you might uh, do something with your body, shift your body, focus, lean forward, um, definitely indicate to them that you are participating. The second thing is that um, when somebody is talking, you are not raising your hand to add a contribution. That when somebody is talking, you are focusing on what they are saying, not what you are going to say next. Um, if you have an idea while somebody is making a point and you want to shoot your hand up in the air and make your point, you should jot it down, write it down in front of you. I totally get it. I'm just like you. Um, I too am worried that I'm going to forget <laughs> what I have to say, especially if it's something really good and smart and insightful. So keep a pen or a piece of paper in front of you, jot that idea down, and then you can focus on listening. The key then is to not say that thing unless it is definitely connected to what the person is saying. So you wait until they finish their point. And frankly, if they've made the point that you were going to make, move on from it. Or if th by the time they got to the end of the point they're making, the thing you were going to say 30 seconds ago is no longer really relevant, Put a star next to it, save it for the next quiet moment, but it's not really relevant anymore. The third thing is really key. We cannot interrupt each other. If somebody is in the middle of a point, you cannot jump in. Even to say like, yeah, totally, I completely agree. Or like, yes, that same thing happened to me. Um, those are positive interruptions, but they can still disrupt a train of thought. We want to be patient until somebody has gotten to the end of their point and then move on. Again, if you're having one of those eureka moments, jot your idea down and wait until it's a good time. Uh, wait patiently and really listen. When you're listening actively, you're not just sharing ideas. You're building upon the ideas of the people who come before you. So they have said something really smart. 
you have processed it and now you're going to build on their ideas. I really, really want you all to work on citing each other. So if Alex makes a really good point, I want you to say, yeah, I agree with what Alex just said about such and such thing. And I was also thinking that that is true in this section of what we read, okay? But you mentioned Alex's name. Um, or, oh, going off of what Sean just said there, I think there's um, another place where that happens. And you're actually citing your classmates' names, you're referring back to them. That's a critical piece of this active listening. I really, really want you guys to work on doing this. And I want you to use transitional language. You can even say, building on the idea that um, Ariana was just making here, um, and then move on to your next thing. Or, oh, uh, what Jason just said connects back to Joe's argument from earlier today, okay? Um, and really creating those connections out loud with your words. That's gonna be really important. I do want you to cite from the book or the research or the article that we read, but I also want you to cite each other. Lastly, I want you to think about policing your voice. Something that happens in the classroom all the time is that folks are talking to me. And I get it, I'm the teacher, right? Um, at the end of the day, I'm the one giving you a grade. I'm the one who made all these questions. I'm the one who's sort of technically in charge of class. But that doesn't actually mean that I'm in charge of this conversation. In fact, I'm really on the periphery of this conversation. And I want you guys to be having a conversation with each other. So when you are looking at each other, I want you to look at each other, not at me. When you're talking, I want you to talk to them and not to me so much. Think about how much time you're taking. We only have so much time in a class period. Um, it's very, very easy to keep going and going and going, especially if you're really passionate about a subject. And I love to see your passion come through, but as much as possible, try to keep your ideas succinct and focused, okay? So if we're in the midst of a conversation uh, about uh, a certain character and how that character is reacting to the death of another character, don't tangentially connect to that character's love life. Really stay focused um, on that character and his reaction to the death to really, really keep that conversation focused and narrow. And that way uh, things will move forward. But be aware of your own voice and your own the amount of time that you are taking in a conversation. So what does this look like in a socially distanced classroom? Not just what does it look like in a normal discussion where we maybe all sit on the floor and look at each other. We can't do that. All the desks need to stay facing forward in our classrooms. So the first thing is that you have to make an effort to be aware of your classmates, even if you are not looking at them because we can't sit in a circle. So look around, nod, smile, interact as best you can from a distance. You might turn your head over your shoulder to see somebody who's standing behind you, but make an effort to use your body language to show your classmates that you are listening. You absolutely have to keep your hands down while other people are talking and focusing on listening. You're not going to interrupt each other. You're going to cite each other and use each other's names in order to build a big, robust, full conversation. And you're going to work on developing enough self-awareness so that you're not taking up an inordinate amount of our class time, okay, as we have these conversations. On a Schoology discussion board, we are still having this same robust level of conversation. It is critical that you are maintaining the same standards when you're commenting in a discussion board. That means you're going to make your post blind. Okay, when you post your comment, you won't be able to see anybody else's posts. But once you have posted, you'll be able to read everybody else's posts. And I want you to read every single post before commenting on any of them so that you get a sense of where everybody is coming from. Okay? I want you to use the like feature. That's kind of like nodding along in class. If you read a comment and you're like, oh yeah, I totally agree. Uh, hit the like button and show somebody that you agree with them. 
when you write comments, I want you to type out each other's names. Same way I want you to verbally cite each other, I want you to say, oh yeah, uh, Stephen, I totally agree with that point. That's really, really interesting. And I want you to use Stephen's name when you do that. I want you to also use that transitional language. You know, a lot of the time, um, the comments in a discussion board will just evolve into like, that's a really good point. Yes, I agree with your ideas here. And I want you to really transition into robust, more full conversations that you're um, pushing forward with, that, uh, with these ideas that we're grappling with. That connects to this next point, which is about real, meaningful conversations. So instead of just saying, yes, I agree, you're also adding a question or maybe saying, I agree, but how does that reconcile with this moment um, or with this thing that this character did earlier in the text? And then I want you to go back to your original post and I need you to read all of the comments. Who is replying to your ideas? What are they saying? And then I want you to re-engage in that conversation in your Schoology discussion boards. When we do talk, I want us to think about reacting to classmates in ways that matter. So acknowledge your classmates' ideas, right? Yes, that is such a good thought, okay? Clarify to make sure you know what they meant. Ah, I heard you say this. Is that what you meant to say? Did you mean this or did you mean this? And then as much as possible, try to synthesize or connect ideas. So if you've got multiple classmates making um, arguments that you feel like you can bring together, um, do that and use your classmates' names, okay? These are really, really helpful, meaningful parts of bringing a conversation forward. Um, as much as possible, provide these high-grade compliments. Everybody likes to be complimented, and to some degree, everybody feels just a tiny bit insecure in these conversations. So if you can provide real meaningful compliments when your classmates make really good contributions to the discussion, that's going to push us forward. Um, if we think about compliments as coming in different grades, a low grade compliment might be, wow, I really like your bracelet, or like your taste in music is so cool. <laughs> um, a high grade compliment is really a, a bigger picture of like, I see you and I see who you are. It's more complimenting who a person is. So if you know, we're three weeks into the school year and you notice um, that Louise is always making just such insightful comments about um, how a text works, say that to her. Man, Louise, you just always have something really good to say about a text structure or text uh, organization, okay? Do that earnestly. Do it without being sarcastic and don't make it about you, right? Don't say, man, Louise, I suck at making arguments like that and you're so good at it, right? Leave yourself out of it. Focus just on what Louise is good at without worrying about what you are bad at. Sometimes we're going to engage in disagreements and we're going to engage in debates and we're going to disagree with each other, okay? When we're handling controversial issues, I need you all to be willing to engage with ideas that are a little uncomfortable. I need you to focus on ideas and not people when you disagree. So you're not disagreeing uh, with, the fa with somebody's, uh, you're not disliking somebody, you might dislike their idea about something. I want you to allow yourself to be convinced. Somebody else might be right and you might be wrong. That's possible. You might change your mind. Allow yourself the freedom to do that. And I want you to recognize the difference between issues that are political and issues that either recognize or deny someone's humanity. So it's one thing to have a difference of opinions about policy or how we should handle something. It's another thing to assume that um, people who are... Um, homosexual are making a choice about their identity, right? That denies their humanity uh, in a way that is not political. Um, so that's a really important thing. So what does this look like in our classroom, right? We're going to learn each other's names. We're going to speak to our classmates. We're going to make eye contact. We're going to verbally compliment our classmates. We're going to use high grade compliments to do that. We're going to engage in discussions that have controversial content, and we're going to be willing to do that. And we're going to come from a place of humility and learning and a willingness to change our minds. On our discussion boards, we're going to do all those same things. We're going to fully understand our, our friends' posts. We're going to read them carefully. We're going to provide high-grade compliments in writing. 
We're going to read and process ideas that we disagree with, and we're going to allow ourselves to really process those. And we're going to remember that there are people on the other side of everything that we see and say, and we're going to be conscientious about that.